21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Oh, wait a minute. What's the address? Yeah. All right. Now, what's the trouble there? There's gas leaking? From what apartment? Well, how do you know it's leaking? Yeah. Yeah. I see. You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. The officers will be right over there. Right away, yeah. You wait outside for them and show them where you think it is. Okay. First Precinct, just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. It had been a busy night in the precinct. Before midnight, there was a three-alarm fire in a tenement house on 76th Street, a mugging in the 77th Street station of the Lexington Avenue subway, a pedestrian struck by an automobile on Park Avenue, and an armed robbery of a bar and grill on 3rd Avenue. With the exception of the mugging, in which case the victim took a cab to the station house, I had rolled on each of these calls. Following the last, the armed robbery, I got into sector car number two, in which I was on patrol as recorder. I instructed the operator, patrolman Daniel Mercado, to return to the station house, and he proceeded in that direction under the L structure along 3rd Avenue. I don't know, Captain. What did he say they were, 17 or 18 years old? Yep. 17 year old picking up bars. Yep. You hear about somebody over 20 getting in trouble lately? It's an exception. What's the matter with these kids, anyway? I wish I knew, Mercado. Guns and knives and gang fights and muggings. How will they have to get before they learn? Well, I've got to have somebody to teach them before they can learn. Yes, sir, I guess that's the answer. That's over 681. Hey. That's one for the 21st. Ah, uh, 681 and 78 Madison Avenue. Okay. At 792 East 83rd. A gas leak in the building. Emergency squad and ambulance. Make the run, Mikado. We're almost on top of it. Yes, sir. 10-4. Wasn't no answer there. Captain Kennelly! 
Who's that, Sergeant Waters? Yes, sir. Well, send somebody to get the people off the first floor. Yes, See, they open their windows. Yes, And then come up here. It's up here someplace. Yes,
I think maybe they might have a chance with the captain. Good. That's with her. Boy, after all that gas. I'll check on the emergency squad. Yes, sir. You come with me, John. Yeah, I'm right with you, Captain. Now, look at that door. Landlord ain't gonna like that. Bacallo! Yes, sir! Did you check on the emergency squad? something like this. No, I wouldn't say that. Is the squad on the way up, Captain? Yeah. Of course, I couldn't tell when anybody is depressed or despondent. I wouldn't know that. Is she going to be all right, do you think? I don't know. Why would anybody want to do something like this? That's what I can't figure out. What could be a reason? I don't know, John. Let's hope we get a chance to ask her that. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Within minutes, two patrolmen from the emergency service squad arrived upstairs with apparatus and were at work attempting to revive the gas victim, Mrs. Margaret Heppel. For this and other rescue work, 13 emergency service squads are strategically located throughout the city of New York. A specially designed truck equipped with hundreds of rescue devices is maintained by each of these squads. In addition, two radio emergency patrol cars equipped for light rescue duty are assigned to each squad and perform around-the-clock patrol duty within their territory to augment the regular precinct patrol force. Almost as soon as the emergency squad men got to work, an ambulance from Beth David Hospital arrived, and the ambulance attendant hurried upstairs to assist the officers. By that time, the odor of gas had cleared out of the kitchen, and along with Sergeant Waters, I watched as the specialist struggled fiercely to revive the woman. At the end of 15 minutes, there was still no response. How much uh, pressure have you got on this? It's all right. It's fine. What do you say she is, Captain? About 35? Yeah, about that. Think they're going to be able to do any good? Well, they haven't done much good so far, Sergeant. No, they haven't. Look around on this side, will you? Okay. Uh, husband ought to be here by now. Oh, I don't think he's had time to get uptown. Guess not, Captain. Oh, uh... Here's a detective. Hello, Captain. Matt? Lieutenant King? Hi, Fitz. Well, Sergeant. How are they doing, Captain? No response yet, man. Any folks there? Did he leave a note, Sergeant? No, sir. None that we found. All four burners were wide open, Matt. The oven jet was on. The oven door was open. Wasn't any accident. Keep a leg warm, will you? Yeah. What's her name, Sergeant? Mrs. Margaret Heppel. Age? We don't know. Oh, looks about 35. Where's Mr. Heppel? Well, the phone rang almost as we hit the door, man. The phone? Yeah. Lucky the roof didn't blow out. Mm, sure is. Who was it? The husband. Oh, was it? Yeah. Is that fact you're still good? He said he was at a sales meeting at the hotel after. Hmm. He's on his way here now. Why did he call, did he say? He wanted to talk to his wife. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look around, Captain. Fitz, you and the sergeant stay here. Okay. Hold it now. We'll switch over tanks. Okay. How's she doing? Any response yet? Uh, no, sir. Not yet. Okay, switch them over. Keep it going. Keep it going now. She, uh... She took those, too, man. I guess she wanted to make a good job of it. No telling how many she used out of the bottle. What are they, sleeping tablets? Well, that's what they look like. We haven't touched them. Set, come over here and get these sleeping tablets together. This window is closed tight, Matt, but not locked. Mm-hmm. What's in the other rooms, Captain? 
Find any notes there? No, we didn't see any. You want to take a look? Yes, sir. All right, uh, keep that pressure there. Who discovered it, Captain? That's it. One of the tenants smelled gas in the hall, called to the super. The super rang in on it. Mercado and I were heading back to the house from that armed robbery. We were just around the corner when the call came over. We got here first. Pretty nice furniture. They must not be too badly off. No, I guess not. How'd you get inside? We kicked in the door. Oh. Wasn't the cane on the door? No, but it was locked. Hmm. You did kick it, Captain. 210 pounds kicked it in. Sergeant Warner. Captain, the husband's on his way up. I seen him get out of the cab. Okay, so I hurried up to tell you. How is she? No response yet. Oh, it's too bad. This is Lieutenant King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad. John Parazzoni, the superintendent of the building. All right, please to make you, Lieutenant. Where is she? All right, Mr. Heppel, just take it easy, will you? Where is she? The officers are working on her with respirator equipment. There's nothing you can do. I just suggest that you stay out here with us. There's something I can do. There must be. I know how you feel, and... I know that you want to help her all that you can. Well, of course I want to help her. Then I suggest that you stay out here and let the officers do their work. How is she? Do you, do you think she has a chance? Well, they wouldn't be working on her if she didn't. Well, Mr. Happel, why don't you come downstairs to my apartment? They'll let you know what's going on. I want you, Captain. No, I don't want to get down there. I want to stay here. You can stay here, Mr. Happel. Right here. But is she going to be all right? That's what I want to know. Is she going to be all right? Well, we're doing our best. That's all I can tell you. You should see what they got in there. You should see the equipment. Just tell me honestly. Do you think she has a chance? She's got a chance, Mr. Heppel. A good chance. Oh, uh, Mr. Heppel, this is Lieutenant King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad. Detective Squad? Yes, that's right. Well, what are the detectives doing here? What do we need detectives for? We roll on every unusual occurrence. In a case like this, we investigate to see that there are no suspicious circumstances. You didn't find any suspicious circumstances around here, did you? No, we didn't. Well, it depends on what you'd call suspicious. Uh, John, why don't you go down and tell all the tenants that they can go back into their apartments now? Oh, I told them all already. Uh, well, go downstairs anyway. Well, what's uh, the... Go down to your own apartment. Uh, all right. Get out of my own apartment. What does he mean? It depends on what you call suspicious. He didn't mean anything, Mr. Heppel. He must have meant something. He said it. He said it. We didn't. Listen, can I... Can I just go in there and have a look at her? I'd, I'd like to look at her and see what I can do to help. There's nothing you can do, Mr. Heppel. You're positive about that? Because if there is, I want to do it. I'm positive. Mr. Heppel, what time did you leave the apartment tonight? Well, I guess it was about 7.15, 7.30. you have dinner here? Yeah, sure, I had dinner here. Did your wife give any indication that she was in a depressed mood? No, she didn't. She didn't at all. Was she feeling all right when you left? Well, of course she was. She wasn't feeling all right. It wouldn't have gone. You told the captain that you were at the hotel after the sales were meeting. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. The meeting was called for 8 o'clock, so it must have been 7.15, 7.30 when I left the house. So what do you sell? Well, I, I work for the supermarkets. You know, I'm sort of a promotion man for a bakery. I go around the supermarket, see that the bread and the cakes, the cookies are all displayed, and Nice, the root man is servicing the supermarkets okay. That's my job, to tend to that. Did you work today? Yeah, sure, I work today. I work every day. Listen, couldn't, couldn't you give me any indication of how she's going to be? I'm worried. I'm awfully worried. We understand that. I'd like to be able to go in to see her. I wish you'd let me. Mr. Happel, there's nothing you can possibly do that's not being done already. You'll get plenty of chance to see her. But she may die. She may be dead now. Well, if you insist on going in, Mr. Happel, I'll take you. But I think you're better off waiting out here with us. Well, all right, if that's what you think. What time did you get home from work, Mr. Happel? Oh, it must have been about a quarter to six. I think it was just about a quarter to six because I went in and got washed up and turned on the radio. To the six o'clock news. I listened to the six o'clock news. Was your wife home when you got here? Yeah, sure, she was home. What did she say to you when you got home? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know exactly what she said. 
Did you notice whether she was troubled about anything? No. If I told you if she was troubled about anything, I wouldn't have gone to the sales meeting. What time did you have dinner? Well, it was about 6.30, I guess. The news was over. I sat, read the paper for a few minutes, then she called me to come in. What did you have for dinner? Uh, meatloaf. Just meatloaf? No, that was the main dish. She had a vegetable, some coffee, something else, some dessert, some cake I brought home. What did you do after dinner? I helped her with the dishes. Do you help her with the dishes every night? Well, most every night. Did you have any kind of an argument with her before you left? What do you mean, argument? We were quarreling. No, we weren't quarreling. Why do you ask that? We weren't quarreling. We had no argument. I just helped her with the dishes, put a fresh tie on, and I left. Go to the sales meeting, like I told you. I don't know what makes you think we were arguing. I was just trying to find out why she would do this, Mr. Heppel. You don't seem to have any answer. Oh, I don't. That's the truth. I don't. Has she ever tried anything like this before? Uh, Margaret? Yeah. No, she hasn't. Not that I know of. I'm sure she hasn't. You know, they're taking an awful long time in there. I, I wish you'd do something. I wish they'd get something done. They're not going to give up hope, are they? No, they won't give up hope. Not while there's a chance. Has she been in good health, Mr. Heppel? Or my wife? Yes. Well, she's been all right, I guess. Just all right? Well, like anybody else, she's had her bad days. She's feeling bad, you know. Has she been under the care of the doctor? Well, as a matter of fact, she has. Is she really ill? She never told me what was the matter. She went to this doctor three or four times. Whenever I asked her about it, she wouldn't say anything. I didn't think it was much. She wasn't in a despondent mood when you left the house? No, no, she was all right. She was fine. Are you sure about that? I'm positive. You don't have any idea why she'd do something like this? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. She was worried about something. What? Well, she's been worried about her sister. Her only sister. Her sister's been in a sanitarium upstate. You know, she got a, a, a bad chest, TB. You think she might have been despondent over her sister? Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> Look, you're asking me to search my mind and see if I can think of something else to be despondent over. That's the only thing I can think of, her sister. Now, please, please, let me go in. I want to see her. I've, I've got to see her. All right. Okay, man. Sure, Captain. It's okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Heppel. Yeah? Why did you telephone home? What do you mean? As soon as the police officers got in the apartment, the phone rang with you. Oh. Why'd you call her? Oh, I... I don't remember now. <laughs> oh, I, I wanted to tell her I'd be home in about a half hour. I wanted to know if she'd like me to bring some ice cream, something like that. Sometimes she asked me to bring ice cream home. That's why I wanted to find out. But can we go in now? Okay. You've been taking sleeping tablets, Mr. Heppel. We had some around here. If you couldn't sleep, she took one. It's nothing like a habit. Just occasionally, you know. If she couldn't sleep, sometimes I took them myself. She's in the kitchen. Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, Sergeant, this is Mr. Heppel. Is she going to be all right? They're working, Mr. Hebel. All right, let's try it a little bit more. Now, I know they're working with you. She's going to be all right. I've got to know that. I've got to know she's going to be all right. That's good. That's good. We're getting some response. We're getting some response, Captain. Good. All right. Get back out of the way, man. Give them some room to work. Thanks, Captain. Thanks a lot. You can make that mixture a little richer now. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's good. What do you think? She's coming around. Looks like she might be all right. Got some pulse. Good pulse. Okay. Good work. Well, she's coming around, Mr. Heppel. Is she? They say they think she'll be all right. Are they sure? Well, they're pretty sure, Mr. Heppel. Captain? 
Excuse me. Okay, put it on supplemental. Yeah. What is it? He's conscious, Captain. All right, cut it. I want to take the mask off. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mrs. Heppel? Uh, Mrs. Heppel? Uh, I'm dizzy. I'm very dizzy. You'll be all right. Uh, very dizzy. We'll have a shot of caffeine to counteract those sleeping pills as soon as she gets in the hospital, Captain. Uh, I'll feel very well. Mr. Heppel? Oh, I feel terrible. Yeah. Come here. Very bad. How is she? <laughs> Is she all right? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, Margaret, what uh, happened? What did you do? Uh, Ed? Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Ed. Why did you do it? I feel terrible. Don't try to move, Mrs. Apple. Why did you do it? Uh, I don't know. I was just tired. Very tired. Oh, Margaret, honey. All right, Mr. Hepburn, you better let them get her to the hospital. Oh, very tired. All right, open up that stretcher. Now, oh, Captain, I'll yeah. see you at the station house. Thanks, Captain. Thanks a lot. That's all right. Oh, she was lucky. Very lucky. Yeah, she was. But... That isn't very hard. Not when you don't want to be lucky. Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Shooting where? No shooting. Well, are there police officers there? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Are you upstairs or down on the platform? Well, which way did he go? Oh, he did, huh? And so it goes. All right. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year, a police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Canelli, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Bryna Rayburn, Harold Stone, Bill Lipton, John Shea, Joseph Julian, and Phil Sterling. Written and directed by Stanley Niff. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking. <laughs>